Hello, I'm Laura Brockway, and I am here with Bishop-elect McClory, who will be installed as the Bishop of the Diocese of Gary this week. It is such an honor and a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much, Bishop. Oh, it's a joy to be having this conversation with you, Laura. It's a delight for me, too. Well, welcome to the Diocese of the Holy Angels. Beautiful, the Holy Angels, of course. That's our cathedral, and I'm looking forward to the protection of the Holy Angels uh, throughout my ministry here. Beautiful. We need them, and they are here. <laughs> Amen. Well, I, I understand that you have a personal coat of arms that you are going to reveal to us today for the first time. It's Yeah, it's really uh, beautiful. Uh, one of the great uh, opportunities you have when you're named a bishop is to divine a, design a coat of arms that when you're given a diocese, they say it's wedded, because there's really that image of joining together with a diocesan coat of arms. So for mine, I really had to think and pray about what are some elements of just not my life story, but those uh, saints and inspirations that I have. So I drew upon a number of elements. I think the first thing that will stand out is that the background is in blue, uh, which is in honor of Our Lady. Uh, I had just completed a pilgrimage to Lourdes just a couple weeks prior to the nuncio calling me up. And I've always had a devotion to the Blessed Mother. And so I wanted to make sure that we had the Blessed Mother represented in the coat of arms. So that's the blue background. Mm -hmm. That would be one of the first elements that would stand out. Beautiful. Blessed Mother Blue, she is involved in everything. So you have a devotion to the Blessed Mother, which inspired your coat of arms. And do you pray the rosary? I do, you yes. Do? And so, uh, of course, I grew up in a very Catholic family. Um, and so one of the witnesses of my parents is their fidelity to the rosary. And so that's been uh, an anchor for me. And, of course, the blessing that I'll have is to be ordained a bishop on the Feast of Our Lady of Lords. So when the nuncio and I spoke, because there's a limited time in which you, from being named a bishop, that you're to be consecrated a bishop, uh, we looked into February and I said, what about February 11th? And so he said, sure. So that's how it worked out. And so some of the other elements of my coat of arms, the dominant image is out of the Blessed Sacrament. So there's a chalice as well as the host. I was ordained a priest in the Blessed Sacrament Cathedral in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And it's really a, a very uh, Christocentric image. The centrality of the Eucharist uh, in the life of our faith is, cannot be overstated. And so for me, it's a great blessing. Uh, and in fact, what's interesting is it's, it's a model. The design of it is based on my own personal chalice, which was given to me as a gift. And St. John Paul II used that chalice on December 8th, 1999, also a Marian feast day. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, when I said I wanted a chalice and, and host, uh, they did it based upon my own chalice. That's beautiful. And the, the key? Good question. <laughs> I've asked people, because it's, it's getting its unveil now, uh, to think about the key. And that is an image representing Blessed Solanus Casey. Uh, Solanus Casey was a porter. He answered the door at St. Bonaventure Monastery in Detroit, and he was just beatified a couple of years ago. And so that is actually based on what used to be given, what was called one of the minor orders of porter. So it's a key that would be given when somebody took on that responsibility, a symbolic key. And so it's really representing Blessed Solanus Casey. Right above it is a circular image, which is really the cords for a Franciscan. My parents met in the Third Order of St. Francis. Oh. And so that cord really represents my parents. It also represents uh, their Franciscan connection and uh, the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. And it's a kind of a Trinitarian reference as well. So there's a lot of meaning in that. And those are somewhat connected because Blessed Solanus ministered at the very uh, site where my parents were members of the Third Order of St. Francis. That is, that's an incredible connection. Yeah. I got Holy Ghost tinglies. Yeah. And then there are two other um, kind of images off to the side of my coat of arms. One is a pine cone. It's a, it's a European style pine cone. And that would have come from the coat of arms of St. Robert Bellarmine. And so my first name is Robert. And his family coat of arms uh, included the pine cone. And so that portrayal on my coat of arms is a connection to St. Robert Bellarmine. He was a great hero in the Counter-Reformation, somebody who really gave a defense of the faith with eloquence and intellectual rigor. So he's a bit of the patron of not just my namesake, but also of 
you know, my, my desire to uh, be a good teacher of the faith. And then the other image is that of a rose, and that rose is for St. Therese or St. Therese of the Little Flower. I love St. Therese. So she's been our family patroness. My mother grew up in Roseville. I'm the youngest of four kids, and uh, my only sister, her name is Therese. And so there's some personal references here as well. And then the parish that I'm coming from is the National Shrine of the Little Flower in Michigan. And so that's where I celebrated my first mass as a priest. Uh, that's where I was as a young adult and uh, where I was recently the pastor. So all those images come together and really uh, show uh, a bit of my spirituality and then also hopefully some inspiration for the diocese. Absolutely. St. Therese is at it again. St. Therese strikes again. She does. She's she does. She's everywhere, and she's bringing so many people together for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've just been amazed at the way St. Therese just keeps popping up in my life. And, uh, in fact, my uh, grandmother, who herself uh, wrote for uh, a spiritual journal, uh, had a great devotion to St. Therese. And so she would write about her, and I have two uncles who are priests. They're both deceased. Uh, but she wrote a short story about how she gave up her ring, the you know the the, the small diamond, for the for the chalice that is now my oh chalice. Oh my gosh! And she talked about how when she prayed about that, it was before an image, a statue of Saint Therese. So she's always been a great patroness for all of us. Little flower strikes again. <laughs> yeah. The other side of the coat of arms is from the Diocese of Gary. It represents the Holy Angels. It represents the seven sacraments. It represents uh, the steel industry as well, part of the, the motif of the background, uh, as well as uh, a thurible, a sensor that really shows our prayers rising up to God. And ultimately, my coat of arms is flanked by a processional cross, which comes from the equestrian order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem, of which I'm a member. So it's a Jerusalem cross, which shows, you know, uh, the centrality of Christ's cross, but also the, the additional crosses indicate that, you know, through all four corners of the world, the gospel will be proclaimed. Amen. And all under the Blessed Mother Blue. Amen, exactly. All with the Blessed yeah. Mother. It's always her work. It's always it her doing. Is. Certainly is. Well, we are so excited to reveal this coat of arms, which reveals so much about you and your heart. And I know yeah. that's what our viewers care about on No Soul Left Behind. So I cannot thank you enough for this honor. And we're very, very excited to meet you and to reveal this coat of arms to everyone. Beautiful. And know <laughs> that I'll pray for you, for all your viewers, Me all your too. listeners. Uh, it's a joy to be coming to the Diocese of Gary, and I want to share the love of Jesus, and I'm so grateful. I've got the Blessed Mother behind me all throughout this, so thank you so much. I appreciate it, Laura. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you.